guys, welcome back to my channel Lorene HD for a new video that I am super excited to be shooting today because I used to have these misperceptions or you know mindsets as to what having herpes entailed for my dating life and for the you know pre-sex disclosure conversations and since having a few coming to Jesus moment, I was able to re-envision how I approach those conversations and how uh, I, I guess I approach sex overall. And the reason why I'm excited to be shooting this is because through the notes that I read from you guys, I can read through the lines that, you know, you have the same mental roadblocks that used to hold me back. And so that's the reason why I'm excited because I think this video can be like really eye-opening and especially helpful. Okay, recalibrating expectations, maybe not, like maybe not so eye-opening. Like maybe you guys have it all figured out and just hanging out with me because, I don't know, my shirt's cool. Okay, so diving right into it in, in situation. I'm at the doctor, I hear my diagnosis for the first time and you know, the world is spinning around me really, really fast and I feel like it's gonna sweep me off my feet. And one of the first things that I think is Fuck, I'm not gonna be able to date as usual anymore and I'm gonna have to have those buzzkill conversations that I've never had, that no one has to have, and that I would never have to have if like, I didn't contract this stupid STI. So yes, you have to have that conversation, but you don't have to have it because you have something to disclose. You have to have it because engaging in sexual activity without having any idea of your partner's sexual health history is a huge risk in the first place. And you probably rolled your entire sexual life without those conversations, but guess what? Today is the day that you should realize that that was a mistake. Every sexually active person comes with their own baggage of sexual health history, and anyone should want to make sure that they are up to speed as to what's in that baggage. And through this like baggage analogy, I'm not just including sexual health actually, I'm including also things like, you know, boundaries, and preferences and necessities and expectations and you know all the things that would make this encounter safer but also more enjoyable like think about it for a second why would you leave a good and safer hookup to chance if you can actually make it good and safer so proceeding with my in situation situation so there's this person that uh, pretty much occupies your mind all the time and you occupy theirs and you're planning on disclosing, but you're freaking out because, you know, maybe it's your first time disclosing or maybe no matter the times that you have disclosed, it always feels like the first time. And you're like, how do I even start? Like, how do I bring it up? <sighs> hey, I'm into you. Are you into herpes? Uh, fuck. Whatever, I'll just be as casual as possible. I'll say quick, disclose, gauge reaction, and moving the fuck on. Da -da 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 -da. Don't move on quite yet. Like I said earlier, the point of this conversation is yes, to share what's in your bag, but also to ask your bae to share what's in their bag. We herpes positives tend to um, focus so much on our disclosure and like our words, our tone of voice, our posture, that we completely forget to share the stage and to actually invite our partners to also, you know, give them a chance to disclose whatever they have to disclose or to just share their results. So sure, you have herpes, but there is a lot more out there that you could contract that would be so much more endangering to yourself that I would urge you to try to make this hookup as safe as possible for you as well. And if your partner doesn't have an answer for you because you know they haven't gotten tested in a while, well then maybe it's not time to exchange bags quite yet. And our last situation in situation situation, so you've disclosed to your partner and you know, you've know you shared some what it is that you're doing to prevent uh, frequency of outbreaks and some stats and like whatever it is that you include in your typical spiel and your partner's like, okay, I mean, statistically I've been exposed to it before so you know, I still pretty much want you. And you are like, yes! <laughs> Yes! Now let's shove this herpes thing under the rug until no one can see it anymore. No, no, no. 
shove it under the rug and never talk about it again? What do you mean? As if your job's done after responsibly disclosing it. In the event that you hook up multiple times with someone you've disclosed to, um, whether it being a fuck buddy, a friend with benefit, a relationship, like no matter the type of relationship, your disclosure is just the first step of what should be an ongoing conversation on how you're feeling and whether this is a good time to have sex or not. And I don't mean to check in at every sexual encounter because, you know, that might be a little too much. But uh, by all means, when you feel like something might be wrong or when you know that you haven't slept a lot that week or you haven't eaten well or there's just something that usually triggers an outbreak, be vocal about it. And same thing, if your partner wants to have a status on how you're feeling and how you've been you know, conducting your lifestyle, they should be able and free to ask and without you taking it personally. Ultimately, those conversations are what's most likely to keep your uh, partner's herpes free and also to keep the risk in check. If this video was helpful, please leave a thumbs up and if you have had your own coming to Jesus moments and you want to share uh, your own tips or how you've reframed those conversations in your mind with other viewers, please leave it in the uh, comments below if you want to reach out to me you can uh, dm me on instagram at laureen hd and that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you soon ciao